Okay, hello. So we are going to today be making a uh, circles mechanic for the game Scum and Villainy, uh, the hack of Blades in the Dark. Uh, yesterday I was looking at doing setting creation and to help uh, facilitate more of that, uh, so I don't have to do it all myself, I want to make a mechanic like in the burning wheel uh, that will allow my uh, players to help build out the setting. So, um, first let's take a look at how circles works in the burning wheel and I'll move on from there. So those of you who've been watching my Burning Wheel Arena series will probably know uh, how this works, uh, or those of you, of course, who have played the Burning Wheel, uh, but we should nevertheless go into the details. Because there's some things I think we can take over from the Burning Wheel and other things that uh, we will have to change because Blades is a, or sorry, uh, Scum and Villainy is a different sort of game. All right, um, so it says here, Circles is an ability and mechanic that allows players to abstract the process of discovering who their characters know in the game world. Okay. Um, so, uh, just roll the dice when, uh, just roll the dice to see who you can track down. Reveal spies in your ranks. Tap informers. Discover traitors in your enemy's household. Uncover and so on, so on, so on. Um, Find the character who knows what you need to know. So, um, the information in question still needs to be extracted from NPCs via role play, social skills tests, and possibly even a duel of wits. But the character's existence and the player's knowledge of him is determined by a circles test. Okay, so that's the description there. Um, that's what circles is. Now, uh, how does it work? Okay, in the burning wheel, so this is in burning wheel, in burning wheel, All right, so in Burning Wheel, this is the uh, definition. Uh, and here is the mechanics. Okay, um, so. 
Uh, each character has a circles attribute. It represents their professional, casual, familial, and informal spheres of influence. Um, blah, 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 affiliations and reputations. Add bonus dice. Then it has scope. Scope. So circles have scope. Um, it says uh, a character's life paths define the framework of his circles. Uh, if uh, the player can narrate such a contact into the story of his life paths, he can test his circle's ability to see if he can track him down. Um, even characters indirectly tied to the life path, uh, perhaps other life paths, in the setting can be rolled Um, so it really says, at, like as it says here, uh, the player's narration creates the circumstances for a circle's test. So fundamentally what matters here is the player's narration. Yes, it is easier or more likely that you'll find somebody within your life paths, or sorry, within your um, setting. So in Burning Wheel, you have a setting like your city, you're from the city, you're from the noble court, you're from the nobility, you're from, uh, you're an outcast, uh, you're a peasant, um, you have, a, you're a professional soldier, uh, all of those things. So if somebody is inside your setting, yes, it's more likely that you could find them. However, if you can narrate a convincing story, it means you can find somebody even outside of your setting. Um, it just has to factor into your life story. Yeah, so fundamentally, uh, it is a narrative question. Um, as for... Um, So it says, when bringing in NPCs, use the life paths and settings as a guide. You can bring in someone who shares the same life path with you. You can bring in NPCs from your setting as long as it makes sense. Uh, if you don't share a life path or a setting with an NPC, then you cannot use circles to bring them into play. But as we saw, like it's kind of flexible what that means, right? Um, Sharing a life path with somebody could be, have a fairly broad definition. You just need to come up with a convincing story to go with that. Um, and uh, a reputation or affiliation you use has to be connected to um, what uh, has to be connected to your life paths and your, your setting, as uh, that would make sense. 
and especially to the person you're trying to find. Um, now, uh, obstacles. I'm not going to copy out all these rules because there are too many. Uh, I, I'm not. We're not going to go there. Um, but I am going to note down what kind of obstacles are typical here. Oops. There we go. Uh, so. Um, so the more specific the person you are looking for, the more difficult uh, the obstacle, um, and also the higher status or skill uh, the person you are looking for, the more difficult. So uh, this boils down to occupation, station, so this is about class, right? Um, disposition and character knowledge. And disposition means something a little bit weird here. Um, it's kind of like what they're interested in. Uh, and time and place. Is it a common place to find them? Uh, okay. So that's pretty much it, right? That's pretty much it. Um, also, if you if you bring back, okay, so that's what goes into a circles test. You then you roll and you see if it works. Um, so. Uh, So we can say uh, something like uh, familiarity. Um, if you if you have already used circles um, on a NPC, you can uh, get plus one D to find them. Uh, that's fine. And then resolution. Um, if you fail the test, you can still meet them at the GM's choice, but uh, they invoke the en enmity clause. Uh, so it is someone who feels insulted mocked, intimidated, cheated, or scorned by the character. So they have uh, increased obstacles to deal with them. Um, okay. So that is that is circles in the burning wheel. So, um, now let's look at the familiar or the, sorry, the, uh, the common thing that you can find in Blades in the Dark. So in Blades in the Dark, in Blades in the Dark, there is something similar. Um, it is the acquire asset role. So let's copy paste this. The 
thank you to the SRD. All right. Um, so you can you can acquire an asset during downtime in Blades in the Dark. So unlike Burning Wheel, uh, Blades in the Dark has a phased system. It's a structured game. Um, and so you have a, spet, a set budget of uh, downtime activities you can spend in order to do these things. So um, one thing you can do is to spend one downtime activity to acquire an asset. Uh, so this can be a special item or set of common items, a cohort, an expert, or gang. So this is the one we're interested in, right? Right there. A cohort, an expert, or gang. A vehicle, or a service. Um, temporary use, uh, okay, so uh, constitutes... Um, one significant period of usage that makes sense for the asset, typically the duration of one score. An asset may also be acquired for standby use in the future. You might hire a gang to guard your lair, for example, and they'll stick around until after the first serious battle under, or until a week goes by and they lose interest. To acquire the asset, roll the cruise tier. Okay, so we're not rolling with circles, we're rolling with tier. Tier, which represents... Let's see, well, in circles is an ability and mechanic that allow, okay, blah, 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 uh, where is it? Ah, circles represents their professional, casual, familial, and informal spheres of influence. Now that's actually very similar to tier, right? So one thing we can say right away, right away for our hack, is we're probably gonna be rolling with the cruise tier. So point one, roll with tier, okay? Cause that's common enough to circles. Uh, the result indicates the quality of the asset you get. So this, um, This is, uh, it might seem like all you do is you roll with your tier and then you get some kind of bonus depending on how successful you are, um, which is partially true, right? Um, you can spend coin to raise the result of this roll beyond critical by spending two coin per additional tier level added, okay? So we can spend resources to imp improve uh, the cohort we get. Um, and uh, the GM may set a minimum quality level that must be achieved to acquire a particular asset. So this is actually very similar to the obstacle setting that we saw in Burning Wheel. Um, so we can see that we have uh, we're going to acquire a cohort, right? Somebody who can do something for us. Um, we're going to roll of tier instead of circles. Uh, we can spend coin to raise the results. And there's a minimum ob that uh, we have to reach. Okay, that is all fine. And just like in Burning Wheel, if you acquire this asset again, you can get plus one D to your roll. So it's exactly the same as familiarity here, right? Um, basically just taken from Burning Wheel wholesale. Uh, now, uh, if you continue to reacquire asset every time it's used, you can effectively rent it indefinitely. Okay, uh, there's stuff about heat. Um, if you wanna acquire an asset permanently, um, you can get it as a long-term project. So that's a possibility could have, right? Long-term project, which is similar in a way to uh, becoming, uh, it, this is actually, um, in the case of getting a, uh, getting a cohort, uh, this is actually the same as building a relationship, right? Because if you are, um, 
in Burning Wheel, if you roll up or if you circles a character enough times, they become a relationship for you, and then it becomes trivially easy for you to circles them in the future. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's just, you know, in, in Blaze in the Dark, this thing is used for many other things that it's not used for in, in Burning Wheel. In Burning Wheel, there's a separate thing uh, for resources, which um, is used to roll up the kinds of stuff you would buy here. Okay, uh, so then we're gonna roll of tier, but what do we wanna do that's different from the acquire asset procedure? Well, what I really wanna do is create a procedure that allows the players to um, introduce new factions into the game, right? I want it to be like circles, but I want it to introduce new factions into the game. That is a possibility here, but there's very little... Um... Oh, thanks. I got this for volunteering at uh, Bit Summit this year. Um... There's a, there's a possibility that the the uh, cohorts that you hire in um, Acquire Assets could end up forming a new faction. But there's no mechanics for that. So I want some mechanics for that, right? Um, I, want, I want something a little bit more sophisticated in that regard. Because you'll notice, like, Burning Wheel doesn't have any factions, right? That is not a thing that that Burning Wheel does. So we need to we need to invent something to do that. Um, okay, so let's just take a brief look at what is in Scum and Villainy to help you come up with new factions. So here in Scum and Villainy, we can see uh, this note. You can always add factions if needed. If your crew is interested in the plight of the Memish, you can add the Memish Rebellion as a faction. Pick a category. Is there uprising religious or justified anger at the hegemony? Uh, weirdness or criminal syndicate, respectively, because each uh, faction has uh, affiliation to a group. Uh, the hegemony, weirdness, or criminal in uh, Scum and Villainy. So you pick one of those, um, and then how powerful are they? Are they strong locally or weak on a few planets? Then they're tier one. Uh, if they're strong in one system or weak in a few, uh, tier two. If they're strong in a few systems or weak throughout Procyon, then they're uh, tier three. And tier four is strong in multiple systems, and tier five has reach and dominance beyond that in some way. Give them a goal, and now detail the rest and play as needed. So, okay, well, like this, this is useful to us, right? This is quite useful. This is similar to um, the questions that are used to determine obstacle in Burning Wheel for your circles test. Um, so we can, we can definitely make use of this. Um, and uh, other than that, there's really no mechanics. So, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? Um, so we're going to roll with tier. We want, uh, we definitely want the GM to set a, uh, let's say, a quality requirement. I don't know. I mean, that's what that's the language that Blades uses for obstacles. So we'll just go with it. Um, and we want we want it uh, we want the role to give the players uh, services no, no, no. give the players access to a cohort um, or what useful like. Do, so the thing about uh, circles is that circles only gets you the introduction to the person. Um, if you want to go beyond that to getting the actual assets that they can provide you, then you need to make further tests. However, Blades in the Dark is set up in such a way that um, 
it's really interested in abbreviating all of those things down. So it's kind of assumed if you gain use of a cohort, that cohort will do what you want. Um, right? And in this role, there's no affordance for the possibility of uh, something bad happening because even if you roll a miss on this roll, you only get an asset at tier minus one, which means they probably fail the quality requirement and you just don't get the thing you wanted. Um, it's not like there's an en enemy clause uh, that you can invoke, right? Um, so that is something quite different from circles. There's an assumption of success, or at least an assumption that spending a downtime activity is a sufficient sacrifice that you wouldn't want um, to just keep doing this thing or that the players wouldn't feel any consequence from failing a roll. So... We want to give the players access to a cohort and their temporary services, right? That's how Blades uh, phrases it. Because this is an action game, it's much more fast paced than Burning Wheel. We want to keep things moving. We don't want to get bogged down in a long negotiation. Um, so temporary services. Um, okay. We also want this to relate to the tier and type of faction uh, enlisted or created, right? So like we want a cohort, but we will also want to give the opportunity to create an associated faction with that cohort. Um, mm -hmm. So that will be related to so use the questions from Scum and Villainy. Um, and do we want this to be able to create complications? I would say so, right? Um, create the possibility of complications, okay? All right, so I think these are some things we need to do. All right, so first, uh, so this is gonna be a, oops, yeah, that's right. Um, so this is gonna be a downtime activity, or we'll say, um, Ooh, what should we call it? Um, we'll just call it a faction roll. All right, this is a faction roll. Uh, so, okay, requirements. Do we want this to spend a downtime activity, which would mean that the players would only be able to make that roll during downtime? I kind of, yes, I mean, that's okay because there is an affordance in Blades in the Dark for if you are making a downtime activity as a flashback, right? That is a thing. That is a thing, that is a thing. Where is it? Probably under flashbacks. Downtime activities in play. Uh, no. Hmm. 
Maybe it's under the score. It's been too long since I used this page. <laughs> um, might be under stress. Trauma, no. Actions and attributes, no. Um, core system, no, I think it's under characters, crew, score, it's under here. Score consists of a few key elements detailed in this chapter, planning and engagement, flashbacks and teamwork. So maybe it's under planning and engagement. Okay, flashbacks. So uh, the rules don't distinguish between actions performed in the present moment and those performed in the past. When an operation is underway, you can invoke a flashback to roll for an action in the past that impacts your current situation. Maybe you convince the district watch surgeon to cancel the patrol tonight, so you make a sway roll to see how that went. Okay. Um, if a flashback involves a downtime activity, pay one coin or one rep for it instead of stress. Okay, great. Um, yes, so that means that we don't need to worry about this being a downtime activity, there is an affordance in the system to deal with that. So this will cost, as uh, so this costs one downtime activity. Um, it uh, so cost one downtime activity. Roll with tier. Uh, a successful faction role creates a new faction in the game and gives the players uh, so no, creates a new faction in the game uh, sets a what is that called a relationship no what is that called mm. no i don't want a category i want to know what is the What is the word for the um, the status of the relationship the crew has with them? Status. Oh, it's just called status. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So status. That's what it is. Um, uh, sets a status with uh, for the crew uh, with the faction and grants temporary access to their resources. Okay. Good. Um, so how are we gonna do this? We need to look at up here. So to acquire the asset, roll the crew's tier. The result indicates the quality of the asset you get. Um, okay. So I feel like all of this is valid. We just need to change the language a little bit. Um, so, to 
create the faction, roll the cruise tier. Uh, the result indicates the quality of the, so the result indicates, okay. The result indicates um, the tier of the faction and the status of the relationship. So, using the Kurs tier as the base, um, one to three gives you tier minus one, blah, blah, blah. Now you can spend coin to raise the result of this roll beyond critical by spending two coin per additional tier level added. So what do we get? Um, I feel like this is probably like the players get a budget and then they can spend it on stuff. Uh, so the faction The faction begins at uh, tier one and uh, their status with the um, crew begins at minus one. Spend uh, Spend results uh, spend result points one for one to raise these values. Um the uh, the player can set the faction to tier uh, five if they, no, that's not interesting, forget that. Okay, so here we go, uh, let's think about it. So the faction begins at tier one. Uh, let's say that the player gets a crit and their tier is two. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that they're, they have four points to spend. So they could spend three points to bring the faction up to tier uh, four, and they could also spend one point to make them at zero. I think that's okay. Now let's consider the same scenario. The uh, faction is, um, or sorry, the player faction, the crew is at uh, tier two. Um, they get a crit, so they have four points to spend. Um, they spend three points. So I think the highest rating you can possibly have with a faction, or highest status you can have with a faction is plus three. So that would put them, if they spent three points, that would put them at plus uh, two and it would put uh, the faction tier at two. Okay, now what if the player faction or the player crew was at tier three? That would mean that they would get five points on a crit, um, which means they could spend up to a tier tier four faction for three points and then plus two. Okay, so this could be, hmm, this could be very strong. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I could do that, I could do a list. I could do definitely a list. Um, I have looked at the moves in PBTA games, but they're really just too simple. Um, you know, this is this is not enough for a Blades game. Uh, this is also not enough for a Blades game. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, unless you have some suggestions for other... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's similar, for sure. It's similar. Um, because all of these... All of these things are coming from circles, right? <laughs> They're all riffs on circles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so... Um, here's one thing we could do it would complicate the role more which is not good but this is one thing we could possibly do which would be to um have the gm set the minimum quality level and if the quality level Well, but I don't know if this is necessarily even a problem because that's on a crit that you could get like a tier four faction at plus two. But Tier four faction at plus two is just way too significant. Oh, what about this? You can only roll up a faction of your tier plus one at max. So if you're tier three, you can roll up a tier four faction Too much stuff, too much complication. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I mean, here's the other thing is that ultimately it does have to fit the fiction. Um, so... Limiting it can help. So we'll say this. Um, the result must fit, uh, or like the player must narrate how the resulting relationship, um, resulting faction relationship makes sense in the fiction using these guidelines. And then we'll use these. Uh, you prefer circles to be a step rather than a solution. Um, yeah, but this is, this is scum and villainy, right? Like I, in principle, I agree with you, but that's not the kind of game this is, right? This, this is, uh, this is a game that is about heedless adventure and shooting first and asking questions later, right? Like it is, it's supposed to move very fast. Um, so I don't know if, oh, you know this faction, 
therefore you now need to convince them to help you is an interesting problem to have in a scum and villainy game right like you want these things to actually get the players something they can grab a hold of and use in the action as opposed to going to a side story which is about trying to convince that faction to help them uh which is much more how um how uh, burning wheel works um that's kind of my feeling at least on this is that the reason why the acquire asset role allows you to just acquire an, a cohort is because they don't want to get bogged down in um, the acquisition problem in the middle of uh, score, right? Okay, so here we go. Um, and then it would be the questions for rel the status we can get. Status. I guess this isn't like the faction game. Or maybe not. So maybe I need to look at the Blaze PDF here. So this is... Faction status, page 45. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. 
and Okay, so these are important questions, right? Um, how much do they like us? How powerful are they? As to the question of whether we should um, reduce the amount that you get for doing this, um, number of points. So we'll say it begins at minus two and that should help. Um, yeah. I think that helps a lot. Okay, so the result uh, grants a budget of points to be spent on the tier of the faction and the status of the relationship. Using the cruise tier as the base. Uh, using the cruise tier as the base, I don't think so. I don't think that's how it's gonna work. Oh no, oh right, I see right there. Um, okay, you can spend coin to raise the result of this roll beyond critical. Okay, that's fine. The faction begins at tier one and their status of the crew begins at minus two. Uh, spend result points one for one to raise these values. The player must narrate how the resulting faction relationship makes sense in the fiction using these guidelines. Okay. I think this looks okay. I think this can work. I think this can work. It's not too complicated. And um, yeah, uh, so that's great. Um, And I don't think there's any more like mechanical things, but we do need to say, um, and declare uh, we'll say like, What is it? Hegemony, weirdness, or criminal? Okay. If the faction is a weird establishment or criminal. Okay. And as far as, so, okay, if you have this option, 
why would you ever choose acquire asset to get a cohort? And I think the answer we can come to quite easily is that there's a chance that you'll end up in a negative relationship with a faction if you t make this roll, which is much more dangerous than getting a bad roll on an acquire asset. So that is good. There's some, some risk reward there. I think this makes sense. I think this works. Okay, cool. Um, let's imagine if the if the cruise tier is one. Uh, so they roll a four to five, um, and that would give them their tier, which would give them one point to spend. So they could get a minus one relationship with a tier one faction. If they spent more coin, then they could get a uh, zero relationship with a tier one faction. And that seems fairly balanced. It seems fairly balanced to me. Um, okay, cool. I like it. I like it. So let's just get rid of these. And we have a move. All right, fantastic. We hacked a thing. We did it in an hour, no problem. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your suggestions. It was a big help and uh, see you around. <laughs>